Welcome back APUSH students, today is chapter 33 of the American Pageant titled FDR and the Shadow of War. If you don't know the American Pageant, it's fine because the content is still going to be the same. I'm going to be going over all the key terms and notes for this chapter that helped me get a 5, so I encourage you to take notes along as well. London Economic Conference, Conference of World Powers to Plan to Combat the Depression. The world plan to stabilize currency went against Roosevelt's inflationary policies, which would restrict Roosevelt's ability to institute the New Deal policies. FDR was also hesitant to join international agreements over his own domestic plans, so he rejected the conference altogether in a bombshell radio message to London foreshadowing the extreme nationalism that, call, that caused World War II. This is also kind of a break from progressive norms. FDR was definitely a progressive president, and a lot of progressives like uh, Theodore Roosevelt, for example, got involved in lots of foreign spheres, lots of foreign deals, but FDR was rejecting this in favor of his own policies, which just resembles a lot of the trends in the world that because of the depression, because of the economic state of the world, they kind of retreated back to themselves and they only were worried about their domestic affairs and that led to some tensions in World War II. Good neighbor policy, plan to have good relations with Latin America. It revealed that America was giving up any interest in being a world dominant power and that they wanted to refine yet bolster their influence to the Western Hemisphere. Latin Americans were helpful allies against the warlords in, Europe's and a in Europe and Asia. Another reason for this is the fact that Europe and the rest of the East, like going towards Asia, was just in such turmoil after World War I and they hadn't really recovered and the Great Depression only made it worse. So America was just comfortable more with uh, the Western Hemisphere and that sphere because it was a little bit more stable, but the Depression, obviously nothing was stable at the time. Reciprocal trade agreement, laws that tried to reignite foreign trade. The agreement followed the principle that trade was a two-way street, so America bought more from others as it opened their goods to others. It also encouraged low tariffs, but did not radically lower them. This agreement and subsequent action raised American trade dramatically, so America was more apt to sell their goods, and they were also more apt to just import goods from other countries. So just, so just increasing global trade uh, as a whole. Rome-Berlin Axis, agreement between Italy and Germany. It was a powerful allyship between the two fascist powers that tied them together. It was the start of the Axis powers, which eventually included Japan. These three nations wanted to conquer more land, which was the primary motivation for World War II. So Hitler and Mussolini united themselves over fascism. And even though Japan was late to the party, Germany and Japan became the most prominent, and Italy didn't really do a whole lot when it came to World War II. Gerald Nye tried to push blame for war onto American war manufacturers. It aroused people to blame Americans for the outbreak of war, which put pressure on the legislature to make laws against war. This was based on the principle that if the profitable incentives were removed, then war would not come to America. You can definitely form your own opinion on this, but it is true that America, American manufacturers and American uh, military producers did profit a lot off of war because obviously more countries and more people needed military supplies, so they were able to sell it. Whether or not that's actually the cause for World War II is, I don't know how much weight that holds, but it, that is that. Neutrality Acts, uh, 1935, 1936, and 1937, there's three of them. Policies that restricted American involvement in the seas. The policies worked together to restrict any transactions made by Americans in the seas during a declared time of war, which ended freedom of the seas. This encouraged blindness to world problems did not work as America could have used its power to alter the course of dictator expansion. So instead of really using its power to step in and stop uh, dictators from taking over not only land but the seas, America just kind of pulled out of it and that this sort of isolationism is a major cause of World War II when it eventually breaks out. Quarantine speech, speech condemning Japanese and Italian aggressors. It was a sign of a slight shift in isolationist policy as FDR suggested economic restrictions against the aggressive powers. The harsh isolationist, isolationist response slowed the shift away from the status quo. So a lot of people were outraged by this speech as they thought that FDR was kind of warmongering and coming out and igniting tensions. So the, iso the isolationist tension was very much still there and it, they weren't gonna let FDR kind of overpower that. Appeasement, making overtures towards the dictators. This is the major cause of World War II. Appeasement policies did not work and played into the hands of Hitler, 
It only allowed Hitler to continue on his conquest without restriction, as he kept defying agreements and making new agreements, which he then defied. It showed the weakness of the democracies. Hitler ignored a lot of the deals that he was making with other countries, and some of these countries just did not catch on or did not uh, want to catch on, is more, how, more like it. As the world continued to make overtures to the major dictators, World War II only became closer and closer to happening. Hitler-Stalin Pact, Russia agrees to let Germany be. Russia's agreement to not denounce German aggression gave way to Hitler's attacks on Poland and other areas in Europe. It ended Western hope that Stalin and Hitler might rival each other, so neither side could gain war momentum. Remember coming into World War II that Russia was not really on the United States' side, but they weren't against them. So don't get something like this confused when you go into World War II that Stalin did not like side with Hitler and was against America or anything like that. Russia failing to stand up to Hitler was a major disappointment for the United States and other more Western countries. Neutrality Act of 1939, agreement that America would fund war but not join it. It stated that America would not use their ships or take on any war debt, staying as far away from any economic or physical conflict. This was not actually completely neutral, considering that Britain and France controlled transactions into the Atlantic, so most of America's funds would end up going to the Allied powers. By selling to the Allies, America improved its moral stance against dictators and raised itself out of the Depression through selling to a brand new war market. The reality of funding wars and getting in on the economic side of wars that eventually it is going to become a military and physical conflict. It's just how it is. You can't just stay on the economic side, so America eventually obviously gets pulled into World War II. Fall of France, when the Nazis took control of France. It crushed French morale and Western morale as a whole. It convinced Americans that they needed to mobilize against Hitler. The threat of the fall of England worried Americans that Hitler would take over Europe and would threaten life across the Atlantic, which, as it was revealed, was Hitler's major plan. America First Committee, isolationist group against American involvement in World War II. So the isolationism just kept persisting, even despite Hitler's actions. They argued that America should take time to bolster its own defenses to protect America from what Hitler could do after he took Europe. So this was a long-term plan to protect themselves if Hitler was to cross the Atlantic. It valued American defense over aiding an offensive in Europe. War Refugee Board, board intended to save the Jews from the Holocaust. It opened up America to Jewish escapees and improved America's moral stance. Altogether, it only worked to save a fraction of the Jewish population, but every life that was saved held tremendous importance. St. Louis, ship that carried Jewish escapees. The ship was rejected at ports in Cuba and America due to immigration restrictions and anti-Jewish sentiment. The ship had to drop the refugees back in Europe, where many of them fell to Nazi rule again. It symbolized how immigration restrictions conflicted with the issue of the refugees. So isolationism and domestic policies as a whole just restricted not only wartime preparation and wartime involvement, but just the simple fact of helping out refugees and people trying to escape the war. Foreign policy is definitely a big issue, but in times of war, isolationism definitely seems to fail. Destroyers for bases deal, deal with Britain that exchanged plans, planes for bases. It was part of America's idea to fund the war, and it also indirectly helped them by acquiring bases between America and Europe. They not only were angered at America's intervention, but with the president's swiftness and secrecy evading Congress. So a lot of isolationists inside America and in the West were not happy with this deal going on with America bolstering Britain with money and bases and all access to military stuff. All age short of war, idea that America should provide supplies for Britain, but not declare war and shed American blood. Most Americans, according to po polls, favored this ideology in approaching the war. They actively wanted to help democracy in Europe and against the aggression of Hitler. So the American culture is starting to turn away from isolationism after seeing all the horrors in World War II but they don't yet commit their own people to go to Europe. They want to just send everything, as it says, all age short of war, all money and supplies short of just sending people there. Election of 1940, Roosevelt defeated Wendell Wilkie. It was the first time a president was elected for a third term. FDR's win was not a triumph, as many believe he would not have won if war did not break out. Democratic majorities in politics remained constant. A lot of FDR's New Deal and Great Depression failures turned people away from him, but because the war was happening, people wanted an experienced person in office and FDR having already served two terms, I think the most people just felt, let's just stick with him throughout this war. Atlantic Charter, United Britain and America and later the Soviet Union 
to protect the interests of democracy and human rights. It was very specific in its protection of self-determination and anti-imperialist human rights. It favored disarmament and peace and returning conquered territory to the people in order to enact a viable democratic government. This was a glaring symbol that America was no longer neutral. America was definitely sided with the allied powers, but a lot of this anti-imperialist and anti, you know, and all this disarmament and peace talk falls apart when the USSR and America begin to break apart and the Cold War happens and all that. So a lot of these, a lot of the sentiments expressed in the Atlantic Charter don't really hold up. Pearl Harbor, Japanese attack on the American Navy in Hawaii. Japan's attack on American ground was essentially a declaration of war. Germany and Italy, as allies of Japan, also declared war on the United States, which officially thrusted America into World War II. The course of World War II was altered significantly. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor is obviously was extremely horrific, and America could no longer ignore sending people into uh, Europe and into the Japan's sphere to just stop the violence and the war. The gist of it is, America began very isolationist when World War II started to happen, and they progressed slowly and slowly towards giving more money, giving more support to the Allies, and eventually, when the war came to them, when it attacked their home turf of Hawaii, they could no longer ignore what was happening, and they had to get involved. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next chapter, and goodbye.